choosing this one. Um, I hope that we can kind of start to get all of us in the same space. Uh, when Lisa asked me, I was just like, what? Why you, what you let me talk about? I'm the same as them. Like, I don't know how what I would say to them is more important than what you guys are already doing. And I think the point of it is that it's not like, it's just another way of thinking about things. So hopefully we can start to engage our kuana ike Hawaii, which is that Hawaiian perspective or lens or thinking, um, and not just in the lo'i per se. And this is like not anything against people who are mahi aikalo in the lo'i. This is just uh, kind of a joke that my kane and I have between us because every time someone's like, okay, we gotta engage HCBE, we gotta do more Hawaiian culture-based education, there's always a kumu or somebody who's like, if you do this, this is not wrong, by the way. Who's like, okay, I'm gonna take my kids to the lo'i, and then da 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 And I'm like, okay, right on. But then, on Tuesday, when they're not in the lo'i, then what, pao? Like, you check the box for the day, you're done, you did the lo'i, now throw them right back in the classroom, and like, we compartmentalize the, the Hawaiian thinking. And that, that's, the, that's the famous always go-to is, let's take a mana huaka'i to the lo'i, let's take a mana huaka'i to the loko'i, let's do this, let's do that. Um, and why we choose to do that, that's always the go-to, but we cannot just do that because then it just lives there. Um, yeah, so nothing against, I have like five disclaimers, like I'm, I'm not triggering any of the mahi in the class, I'm mahalo the loko uh, the lo'i people, um, but yeah. Okay, so I am from, this is Moloka'i by the way, you cannot really see it, but this is the east end of Moloka'i. This is uh, Lokoi'a, Ma'ane'i, Neo Palafish Farm. Um, that's where I'm from. I... So I grew up on Moloka'i. Oh, Mahalo, that works too. And then, look and see me. Just... Okay, 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 I'll show you. Okay, so, no Ma'ane'i Moloka'i Mayao, Maika Lokoi'a, Neo Pala, Ke Iyo Mianei, Makahi O Kapine. Alilo wa helevao i ke kula o ka meha meha ma ke kula ki e ki e no me Irish name ma ka hale o ki nau um, so we all we actually the three of us all were in boarding together at the same time um, and I actually still live in boarding my husband is I am like a true boarder for life so my husband is a dean in the boarding residential life program. Um, now, but we've lived on campus for, I think this is like our 13th year of living there. Um, and so it's interesting to kind of be in that same space, not on the student side, but on the makua side, and then now raising my own kiki within boarding and on campus. Um, in terms of, these are just kind of like the things that I think when you introduce yourself, these generally pop up even before for me, like before I usually say my name to somebody when I'm working with them. Um, when I think about mo'oku ohau and genealogy for my own self, uh, my kupuna kuakahi, my great grandma, her ohana is from Kipahulu in the Kaupo Ke'anai area. Um, and then my kane, uh, Kona, he's a proud Kekaulike graduate, um, Tilin Black. That's his lead, Tilin Black. Um, but he is from Kanayo, his whole family is from Maui. He's actually the only one who doesn't live on Maui. Sorry, his name is Kona Keala Kuinabo. He's the Kuinabo. I'm the Keala. Um, so it's kind of weird to be on Maui without him. I think this is probably one of like two times that I've been on Maui without him. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of like my Maui Pilina and connection. Um, and part of my Mo'olelo. Okay, I just make sure all my kinds pop up my key. So this is my Kane Kona. I'm also the oldest of four kaikamahine, four girls. I'm also the oldest of my cousin, so with that comes kind of a lot of kuleana. That's also part of, I think, how, for me, when I think about kuleana, a lot of it, I think, is not necessarily predetermined, but a lot of it comes through our genealogy and our mo'olelo. And then that's kind of how we, well, for me, how I think about my relationships and how I move through my daily life. These are my keiki, kapi'o, ameke, ve'ula. Um, she's six, she's four, they give me plenty of stress, I love them, I remind myself all the time. Um, but as Kumu Kalei reminded me this morning, she was my Kumu, that my keiki will only give me a small amount of stress. 
that I gave to her in her class. And she was just like, you have Koloi kids, because you was Koloi. And I was like, come on, look at me now. I do it Koloi kids all day, all night, mines and other people's. Um, and so for me, this is kind of just like a super quick snapshot of like my daily life, what, what I'm about, what I got to remember to do, and what drives me. And then always thinking about the tamua, the, the mo'o, the succession, and like, if we're not taking kulean, kuleana on in an appropriate way and really fulfilling that, then we're not paying attention to the succession, yeah, the continuity. And with that, without that, we're not really, we're not really living up to all of these other stuffs. So I always have that mo'o, that, that forward movement and the, boy, maybe it's like a forward around spatial movement that there should be continuity to my work. So this is me in a nutshell. I don't have kumu up here. But like Lisa said, I teach um, Hawaiian history uh, at Kapalama High School. Uh, I also teach Mo'aukala Hawaii, which is Hawaiian history, Maka'olelo Hawaii. Uh, before I worked there, I was in, I was at Kekula Kayapuni Anu Inue for like six years. Um, and I'm also a Kayapuni product. I never graduate, but I went to Kayapuni Kualapu and then I went on to Kamehameha. And then, so I can tell you a really little bit about my, um, the research that I'm doing, with, not with Lisa, but with Lisa, because we're crazy. But I, next cohort starts next year, you guys, go get them. You're only gonna be crazy for like four years. And then new kind crazy, I think, afterwards. Um, but what my research entails, and then I'll tell you guys why it's important, um, is looking at, uh, what we need for, well, what a specific group of Ohana Hawaii and Keiki Hawaii need in terms of new learning and teacher techniques and kind of like an atmosphere. Because I'm looking at families who chose to raise their kids through Ike Kuuna Oivi Hawaii, which is they gotta be, have Kanaka genealogy, Olalo Hawaii is the only language of the household, the loina, the norms and mannerisms, and uh, cultural practices of the family are distinctly and authentically Hawaiian tied to Hawaiian practices before 1778 and that are engaged in Hawaiian religion or spirituality. Um, this comes in I think a lot for me as a Hawaiian history teacher because I have a kuleana to try to give the students the most authentic history that I can and with multiple viewpoints because Hawaii Island history is different than Maui Island history. And yes, my kupuna is from Maui, but more of my ohana is from Hawaii Island. And so I'm more Hawaii Island centric, but with Akane, who is Maui hard, Kahikili hard, he checks me all the time. This Ali is fabulous, Kahikili is better. This person is fabulous, this person comes from Maui. This is the line. So I've, over the years, that's been a good reminder for me, and that's kind of something that I try to always bring in for my haumana that being Hawaiian in today's world and being Kanaka means that we cannot look at things from the one perspective, from the one book. We gotta look at stuff from uh, many different perspectives and more so not just from the books, yeah? Go find the people, go talk to the kupuna, find, listen to the mo'olelo. Um, and then for me where my work kind of ties in, my, my work and my research work, um, ties into my school stuff at KS is that I'm hoping that uh, the work that I do, besides, first and foremost, it's kind of meant to speak to Kayapuni schools and like what is the next steps that we need to take. Because yes, there's probably a small number of Ohana who are raising their kids like this because we're a little bit off, but there's lots who are on the cusp of it or who want to get engaged in it. And all of our education, especially our Kula Hawaii, yeah? Kayapuni, us, Punana Leo, we gotta take another step. It's been 35 years. And not that we're not doing choke stuff, but we gotta keep doing choke stuff and keep looking for like, how do we now be more Kanaka and be more comfortable with being Kanaka? And so that's what I'm hoping to get from studying, studying sounds bad, from working with and listening to Ohana like my own. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping that that helps KS to kind of like, I think you guys are doing a really good job here. I think we have a harder time. Um, but take a few steps in empowering our own with our own, yeah? Uh, and so, 
quick side story, and hopefully this is the good tire inner to my other stuff. Um, this actually just happened last week. So we raised our kids like this, yeah? And I was trying to figure out like, okay, what I can do when Lisa would ask me to come and share. Because I was like, I don't know what I should talk about. Um, my Kiki last week, my older daughter, Kapi O, was telling my younger daughter the story of Raya. And she, here's my Raya, Disney, yeah? So we only Olala Hawaii at home, so when they were young, they're still young, but like, I think only this year we kind of started allowing them to watch certain stuff. We just like turn the cable off, turn everything off, we listen to Mele, we watch Mary Monarch on YouTube, choke, and like turn the radio off and listen to Lola Manaleo in the car. Um, kind of extreme, but the bubble needed to be built so that they understood that this is their foundation and that was to completely build that Kuana Ike Hawaii. So now recently we've kind of like, okay, we get Disney Plus, like every once in a while, we watch them, whatever. We usually sit with my kids the first time they watch something and kind of like walk through them with it. So we watched Raya. My older daughter was explaining it to my younger daughter. And she, we were all driving in. I think we were actually here on Maui. Um, so my younger daughter was like, oh, hi, Mike, I'm all alone with Raya. Tell me the story of Raya. So my older daughter starts out with, Oba kikane, ali mo popo ya uka makuahine, o mea ka makuahine. Noho pulawa hanau ia o raya. Noho lawa lako maka aina o kumandra, o sisu ka moolele he akua o ya, he kupua. And so that what she was just saying was like, Ba's the dad or Ba's the man. I don't know who the woman is, the mom of raya. They sleep together or they lay together, then they have raya. They live in the aina of kumandra. That is the aina where Sisu is the akua and Sisu is the, the kupur, the demigod of the place. And I just kind of was like, oh, fuck yeah, how she's telling the story, because that's not how Raya starts out. Or I don't even know if that's the name of the movie. Yes, 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 yes. okay, okay. Um, and then so we were just kind of laughing about it, me and my kind of going, so funny, yeah, like, okay, whatever. Because she watched it and we watched it in order, whatever. Uh, and then. So in doing my research, I've been kind of trying to, they tell you journal, 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 same like teachers, yeah, anecdotal notes, anecdotal notes. Um, I didn't write that down, now I have though. Uh, but I started to pay attention more to stuff like this where it kind of is like, huh, that's funny. But because the Kuana Ike Hawaii has been built within her, she watched the same movie that I watched, but her processing when she regurgitated it out, it wasn't a regurgitation. It's just like how the mo'olelo went. It was her own like, Hawaiian processing of when I start a mo'olelo Hawaii, I start with the genealogy. I start with the aina. I start with the akua of that place. And that just comes from that repetition of her learning in that way and learning mo'olelo Hawaii in that way. But I think if I wasn't doing my research, I don't know. I probably would have just been like, so cool, kind of weird, and then moved on. Um, but that kind of made me think about what I was going to say, what I would share today with you folks in terms of like, how do we engage that kind of thinking so that when we process through the content that isn't Hawaiian history, Hawaiian culture, Hawaiian language, that is geometry. I so don't have the answers for that, by the way. Um, but we start to kind of get the kids to process through it as Kanaka and as that Hawaiian lens so that it's not just like, it's not just this is my haole box and I have to live there in school. And this is my Hawaiian box and I get to play there and enjoy there and be there with my kupuna when I go to the lobby. Because we cannot, like we cannot have them compartmentalize those things. Because that's how we teach them that compartmentalizing our ano Hawaii is okay. And that's when we lead to the, I know can do math, I know can, the reading, that's not, that's haole things, like how Kalekoa folks were talking about this morning. Um, and to me that's kind of like the vai vai for here for us right now is how do we figure out how to change the way that they process the information because we cannot right now maybe I don't know about you guys but I don't have total autonomy of my content um, and certain things as the systems are right now have to be taught not in the same way as, as maybe it says in the textbook but they still got to learn a plus B equals C or whatever, right? You guys are all upheld to a certain standard of the kids got to get and they got to hit these things until we can change what school looks like, yeah? Um, and so that's for me the big vai vai and hopefully, like I said, I totally don't have all the answers and 
my other disclaimers, I've taught middle school and high school, mainly social studies, Olelo Hawaii. I taught science for two and a half years. I hated my life. <laughs> uh, but that is what the school needed. And I taught it in Kayapuni, and I hate science. And my husband's, uh, this was the answer, my husband's background and his certification was in secondary science, and they told me, just go ask your kane. And I was like, oh. I just gonna ask my kane every day for teach me Adam so I can teach him tomorrow to my kids. Okay. Um, but I feel like most of us have been in that kind of a situation where this is what the school needs and you're an educator, so suck it up and do it, yeah? Um, and so that's kind of where that probably that class taught me how to kind of change how I think because I, I, I know like science. Even in high school, I was like, I cannot do this. Chemistry, what is that? I'm not, I'm not gonna even see them. Like, are we going to blow something up? <laughs> no. Do we get to make a volcano? Even in high school, I was asking my, what is that conceptual chemistry? Mm -hmm. I was in the law of the science <laughs> classes for sure. Um, so I had to like ho'o Hawaii it as much as I could so that I as a kumu could get through it and I wasn't like putting my, my struggle on the kids and telling the kids that I cannot science because I want Kanaka. And I cannot science because I don't understand this haolika in science. Um, so for me, it was trying to figure out how to adjust the kuana ike Hawaii. Sorry, I realized I should have pressed the button. Adjust how we look at that Papa Akiakamai, that science class, so that I could get through it, so that the kids could get through it, and so that I felt comfortable in there as a Hawaiian and knowing Hawaiian practices. Um, so even when we did learn about the atoms, it was okay because we were learning about atoms and then relationships and connecting that to like genealogies and practices that I could understand and easy was easier for me to talk to. I still had to get lots of kokua from my husband. I'm not I'm not gonna pretend like all of a sudden I was a science guru at all. Um, yeah. Okay. So when I I was trying to figure out like what your guys' stuff was for HCBE. Um, we do Aola. I think that that's partially over here too, yeah? Uh, when I looked at your guys' KS, Maui webpage or whatever, you folks had this in the academic session, which I love because I feel like what we have written down, it's very confusing. And I don't know how many PDs we do on Aola and still people walk out and they're super confused. And people have taken the Ike Kupuna one, this is just in my own department, and said, Ike Kupuna, Russia, we just gonna do that. I'm like, you kinda, that, that whole section says HCBE, you gotta do, you gotta ho'opili it to me Hawaii. So I thought that when I looked at your folks one with these guiding principles, it was much more clear in terms of where you folks were headed. Um, and so I was, I'm not gonna read them to you folks, I'm sure you guys know this, but I just wanted to throw it up here as a reminder for me. I also put pictures from your guys. This is all Maui, the HCBE section. And I was like, okay, these are fabulous photos, right? And I think all of this, this is definitely like Makahana Kaike working outside, all of these things, yeah? I think they're in the mala. Wait, Anake Ekeles Kani, I think? Maybe, I don't know. Kui, Kapa, Hana Kapa, Ho'okele, I probably, I Hula something, yeah? And then Papa Olalo Hawaii. And I was like, this, guarantee, HCBE, yeah? Guarantee. It's kind of hard to say it's not, in some way, shape, or form. Um, and this is, like I said, the go-to for when people are like, let's do HCBE. I'm taking my kids to the Lloyd. I'm going to take my kids on the va'a. We're going to learn one hula. We're going to do kappa. We're going to teach a little Hawaii. <laughs> not wrong, yeah? 100%, kako'o. And this is... I think where we're most comfortable because it puts us in the same authentic-ish kind of space as where our kupuna were. When you're in the lo'i, especially with loya, mahi'ai, who've been doing it, who know the practices, the, who know the loina, the mannerisms, you just kind of start to have to abide by the space and you're not going to kani kani, you're not going to be that noisy person when you go holo holo on the loko'i'a because that scares the fish and nobody, well, depending on the age. Nobody told me that I had to be quiet. My dad just said, right? Or like, you stay home. You can make noise, stay home. Um, you can ask what we're doing, you can say we're fishing, we're not going anymore, yeah? So those kinds of, these kinds of practices, 
put us in that place of authenticity where we're actively engaged in a practice and we can feel our kupuna with us because we know this is this is kanaka, this is Hawaii, this is what we should be doing. But we gotta figure out how to have that transcend over to this side, to this side, so that when we're doing math or when we're doing I don't need to pick on the math people, sorry. Do I have math people in here? Oh we do. Okay, <laughs> go get them you guys. <laughs> the queen of math yeah. people. <laughs> or like when I'm writing my dissertation late at night and I'm like, this is stupid. Like, my kupuna never write my dissertation. What am I doing this for? I gotta change the mindset and try and process through things. In one kuana ike Hawaii, go sit first with my kappa that my tutu made. Go sit first with these other things. Go sit outside. Leave the laptop inside. Don't even think about it, yeah? But so how do we take the, that physical space, that physical action, and put that inside of us for our kids too so that we can not always feel so distant from that when we're doing our other work. Okay. How am I? Okay, okay. So, I've looked at a bunch of stuff, KS, Kayapuni, uh, the Ahapuna Naleo folks, the UH systems, and looked at like what these, what these institutions and organizations um, are kind of saying in terms of what makes our Hawaiian foundation. And you guys have yours, right? Besides Eola, like this is the KS Maui one. Like this is what, and I'm, I'm, I'm right though, yeah. Like this is what it is, yeah. I just check him by because it's recording now, and they're like, it's Pili. She never even do good research. This is what you have on your front page of academics. So if I'm wrong, change the front page of the academic <laughs> section. Um, but if this is so, you guys, everyone kind of has like the pathways and the big elements of what HCB learning and what a Hawaiian foundation should kind of look and feel like. Um, and a lot of them touch on mo'olelo, and that would be like oral histories or some people like to say legends or stories or whatever. And for my understanding and my usage of the word, mo'olelo is fact all the time. And maybe it's not fact for me, but maybe it's fact for kui, yeah? Maybe kahekili is the best ali'i for, <laughs> for some, and that's the fact, yeah? And maybe some it is ma'ili kukahi, and maybe some it is whoever lot, right? Um, so for me, I use mo'olelo as history, evidence, facts, real kind, tangible stuff. So even if it's not for every single Hawaiian in the room, it is for some. Uh, and mo'oku auhau, that means genealogy, uh, and all those kinds of delineations and connections that are not just people-based, but ike-based, aina-based, uh, number th and I'm using kind of like general words. I know that we have different ones. Like you guys use kulaivi for vahi, which is a lot more, I think, specific and pointed because you're talking about the ties to the actual aina that your keiki or whoever is from. Um, ho'omana is always a uh, one in there. Sometimes you see it as uhane. It's definitely a part of KS. This one I think is a, depending on who you are in KS institution, it's kind of like this elephant in the room, tread lightly. I deal with it all the time. I've gotten emails from Makua and higher ups about how do you do the two? And I think in terms of in school, we just gotta, yeah? We just gotta give them everything because our kupuna were everything. Not to say, I'm gonna tell you what you do in your hale, but I'm not gonna not share how our kupuna lived through through making it to the 5%. Whether it was they went ho'ola ho and ho'omana yesu yehova, or they went underground, all of those things helped us to get to where we are. And for me, ho'omana is something that reminds us that there's so much more than just us, than just the tangible, the kanaka, the things that we see. And it helps us to, to connect to these other things. All of these things are to help build our kuleana. And then olelo is kind of like the key to the, for, for us in our own ohana, we always talk about people are so like, oh, you're keiki, the only olelo Hawaii. And we're just kind of like, yeah, but it's not just that. Like, that's the key to the door to get into the other side. Not to say that if you're not there yet, you cannot, but use what you can, yeah? So, because we know olelo, whatever olelo it is, with the olelo comes a certain type of kuana ike. Um, I would say the, the thing that helped me really see this real blatantly was at the same time, so it's like two years ago before COVID. In one semester, I was teaching regular Hawaiian history, honors Hawaiian history in English, and then 
Mo'al Kala Hawai'i, which is honors Hawaiian history and Hawaiian. Any one of my students will say that I probably primarily teach in pidgin, and then like a lot of Hawaiian words, and then some days I sound like I speak good English. Um, but having those three classes running at the same time, and teaching similar things for the Mo'al Kala class, I was using a lot of like the actual Nupepa Mo'olelo and history stuff. Uh, and then the other classes I was using, you know, ruling chiefs, which is still Kamakao, but that's not Kamakao's word. Somebody even translate them. And so just watching the kids move through the, the information and process was like night and day. <coughs> and it was, you could compare the honors class to the other class, and it was just, you couldn't do the same things with the regular and the honors class taught in English as you could with the, the Mo'al Kala Hawaii class. And it was just because they were learning their history through their language, so you, I took like four filters off, yeah? And that even the pacing was a lot faster. And this is also coming with the fact that the kids are reading stuff that is way above their level language-wise. Because Nupepa Hawaii, as a person who is fluent, who only speaks Hawaiian in their household, who's writing their doctorate Maka'olelo Hawaii, I gotta read them. Like I gotta process, definitely get words I don't know. I read ruling chiefs, I don't need to do that. Like I can just kind of go, every once in a while like, that's a really weird word, nobody says that anymore. But you know, so it was interesting to have that all going at the same time and like physically see the difference just that the language makes because I was giving them the same pieces of Mo'olelo but one that somebody else translated of Kamakao's work and then here's Kamakao what he actually wrote. Um, so we cannot ever leave language out and I know we're all at varying levels and then it's a whole nother thing, right, because we feel like we don't have access to it, or like, I never get to learn young. My parents don't olelo Hawaii. We all only olelo Hawaii. Um, so I'm always real careful about um, people of the generation before who never have the same privilege that I have. And then even people of the same generations that I have of me and below that didn't have that privilege of going to Kaipuni. I don't really remember ever learning like a structure because I was just like, thrown in the fire, you know? So I realized that that's, I realized recently, I'll say that, that that is a privilege, and that it's, because <laughs> somebody told me, Kili, that's a privilege, you know? And I was like, no, it's not, it was rough. It's a privilege, because I don't remember it. It was, it's so easily ingrained, right? Um, so this one, we gotta talk about it, and you gotta use as much as you can, when you can, when it works, yeah? It's okay to mess up also. We think the kids are, totally loy loying us or evaluating us or whatever. Only so much. People are scared to talk Hawaiian around my kid. They don't to correct your olelo. They don't care about your grammar. They just like have a conversation. And I think that's where our students are at too. Even if they can go, Kumu never used that word right. Kumu, that's not a pakoka, that's a whatever, yeah? But they really just like see us try. Okay. I wrote all of these things that I was gonna say and I think I'm saying them. But we'll just go. <laughs> Time to get to 35. They would give us extra. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, good. I didn't get that. Okay. Oh, we have to 35. <laughs> <Sorry>. Tell Siri. <laughs> okay. So, oh, that's good. Then I can, now we'll just go same piece. Okay. So, these are those same things. I've kind of grouped some together, added some things in, because we have, Hana is a big part of your folks one, and it's a big part of, I think, all of the stuff. Oh, I did forget one thing. Okay, so I super like this diagram. I was looking for one from it, for it. And then I was telling my husband, like, I'm looking for something that I can talk about all of this at one time. And I was trying to make my own Venn diagram with the, all the circles and overlay them. And he's like, did you look at my dissertation? No, I never read his dissertation. <laughs> I've read parts of it. And he's like, go inside, put it up, whatever. So I pulled this from his dissertation. And for him, it was, you, while we can talk about them separately, and especially today when we're breaking it down, depending on what level of haumana you're working with, and what level, not even haumana, of people that we're working with that understand these things, it's one of those things where you, you kind of got to explain them separately, but they never are really ever separate. And even if we break this down to like, we're going to learn about, I don't know, Wailuku, yeah? Automatically, you talking, someone's gonna say what it means, what the water is about, yeah, what the, the luku and those things, so Olelo comes in, 
We're gonna talk about the battles that went there. So Mo'o levels are coming in. We're talking about the families that live there. And then it starts to come into the nowadays, right? Oh, so-and-so lives there. Oh, what high school they went. Oh, da 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 And all of these things. Oh, maybe they go same ward as so-and-so. Maybe they're in the same church. Maybe in Kavakahiko, they had the same oihana or kuleana, so they did practice with kuula or kane or whatever, yeah? And so all of our mo'olelo in Hawaii, I would say all, I'm just gonna make a statement, all of them, gonna have all of this, yeah? You cannot take them apart. Even though today, especially in education, we like to dissect stuff, we like to, they give us the chart, right? The lesson plan chart, you gotta fill in all of the boxes, how you can hit all of the standards. I don't hit the mo'olelo standard, like this. When really, it's like this, with a little bit of like, okay, this can kind of be on the outside, but mm, depending on how I say it for that day, it's also in Olelo and it's also in that. So I kind of try to always remember that all of these, yeah? Same but different. Same but, same but different. different. But you need all of them. You cannot pretend like one of them doesn't exist. Because even if we don't address it, it's still there, yeah? Okay, sorry. You know, since I would bother him and he would give me that diagram. Okay, so this is, the, this is what I had. And I was like, I cannot figure out how to make the circles and the words still show up. But we just left it like this afterwards. Um, and so for me, and I added this Hana one in because this is something that, this is where we're coming from a lot of times, yeah? We think of HCBE as outdoor learning, as hands-on learning, as going to the lo'i, going to the local yeah, we can go outside, we can ulana, yeah? Um, and I'm just acknowledging it because it's totally not wrong. And right now, this is the space that makes us feel comfortable, yeah? And when we combine these, all of these things on the bottom are kind of the elements, again, probably you can lay them straight over, but the elements that come forward that kind of change the way that I think about stuff and the way that I've seen my students adjust and my keiki, my own personal keiki adjust. And it's because through these mo'oku auhau, mo'olelo, the aina stuff, we're building that pilina, yeah? We know that we're of the aina because we know kumulipo. We know that the aina was born and then so were the kanaka. Those are our kupuna. And so it is part of a relationship that's more than just, I live in this area. It is familial, yeah? And then, like I was saying before, for me, kuleana is a big thing. I don't know if it's because I'm the oldest and I've been told like, this is your kuleana from my dad and my tutu and everybody from when I was young. And I use it on my students and my kids. But this, the kuleana really comes in as we start to feel more comfortable with this and we kind of stop fighting the kuleana or stop turning our back even though we get the, the funny kind feelings in our na'au. And that's when we can engage the kuleana and kind of play with the culture, yeah? Get more involved with it and take it outside of the boxes that it normally feels right in, that it normally feels pono in, because we gotta be Hawaiian, not just in the lo'i. Like, we gotta be Hawaiian everywhere, yeah? We be in the plane, if we go to wherever law, in someplace else. And then with all of those stuff, when Lisa goes to Italy, yeah, and they'll take us, um, that's when we're gonna get the continuity, because when we know our culture, we know our kuleana, we know we have pilina, we cannot leave them, we can share, go and continue, yeah? So, I've been trying, I've been trying to like think of things that you could do in each class. Um, of course, I'm gonna start with social studies. I think it's probably the easiest one because the class is based on mo'olelo. You cannot do mo'olelo without talking about people's, you could, for me, I like to teach it even as a genealogy. Like we could teach the whole thing genealogically and talk about the people and then branch out and branch out and branch out. So I was trying to figure out like, okay, how is this gonna be bye bye for actual kumu next week? I hope it is a little bit for everybody. So Kalamai, if I would butcher your, your content area, but I would try. Um, and I started with the things that I felt comfortable with. <laughs> so social studies, Pilikanaka, on the top of these, I just kind of have um, some of the big concepts that I think are real easy to address. For me, always, whatever class it is, whatever content it is, it's about throwing the Hawaiian up first and like unap unapologetically and intentionally and not like, we're gonna start with Hawaiian and then next week we'll talk about actual Greek gods, yeah? We're gonna talk about these guys, 
and then we're gonna talk about these guys after it. And look, they align. We have Pilina. It's not the same, it's different, but look at how these different OEV people practice, yeah? Um, and so I think for the social studies guys, it's probably really easy to kind of use the, think about processing and engage that Kuana Ike Hawaii, even when you're not looking at Hawaiian stuffs, because you can speak to the same kinds of concepts that are real prevalent in Hawaiian thinking, which is Mo'oku Ohau, which is the Kulaivia of places, which is the, the Pilina, because that's what social studies is, yeah? Like the Hawaiian word for social studies is Pili Kanaka, which is like people relationships, yeah? So I'm not gonna spend choke time on that. I feel like the social studies people are like, Kumui Yaram, Kumui Yaram, that's right. <laughs> um, but, and then the other thing for me is if you're not good, if, they're, if it's super difficult to do Hawaiian first, then what is the indigenous mo'olalo of that aina? And why aren't we starting with that first? Even if the textbook doesn't start with that first. Like, there isn't any issue with changing the way that we give our haumana ike so that they can be, I hate to use right or wrong, but like be in a pono place with their learning and that we're honoring the actual lahui or people or aina of the place that they're learning about. You should always learn indigenous first. But if we was doing that all the time in Hawaii, it would be a much easier place for us to live in. Okay, Olalo, also I think kind of an easy one, um, because regardless of the language that you're teaching in, and I just use language arts, regardless of it, if it's English or Hawaiian or Japanese or French or whatever, a lot of times you get to play with the content of the mo'olelo or like the whatever wording that they're learning in. I know for foreign languages, a lot of stuff is grammar. Um, and so a lot of kumu make up their own sentence patterns, make up their own sentences. And you can always tell what styles kumus have because they'll use like all of these sentence patterns about whatever, yeah? And so I don't think there's anything wrong with using sentence patterns that are based in your aina, that are based in your, I mean, not sentence patterns, examples to translate or whatever that are based in where you come from, because then the kids will get it, yeah? They know what the things look out, like outside. They know these things, these mo'olelo, and if they don't, right on, now they go, no, so they're a little bit more aware than when they walk around. For English, I actually think that some of our English teachers at Kapalama do this really well. They kind of changed the way they move through all of their English uh, coursework, and a lot of it is Hawaii or Polynesian-based readings, and so they're talking about different styles of learning and reading. And similar to how my keiki processed raya, when we process through our mo'olelo, when we process through readings, can we adjust the way that we're asking the kids to share out that information? I remember it was always like plot, what's the thing, climax, whatever, whatever. Is there a way that we can adjust those, those learning activities, those worksheets, so that we're not starting out in that same kind of thing? Maybe we start out with the genealogy, like if they had to fit in the genealogy, if you had to write a mo'olelo about these guys and you started off with that same stylistic Hawaiian uh, mo'olelo story style, it changes the, the mo'olelo of once upon a time, Raya is so important, to this is Raya's dad, this is Raya's mom, this is Raya's aina, this is Raya's akua. Now let's learn about Raya. Because it, does that make sense? You guys see how it's like, the focus has changed from the individual, once upon a time this person is so important, to this is why she is who she is, and now let's talk about her, but we all know these things coming in, so now this Pilina, these relationships are gonna be why she is who she is and how the future happens for her. Okay, so those are the ones I feel comfortable with. <laughs> now we're gonna move into the other stuff that I don't feel, and I tried to get all background images that I was like, if I had to write one math equation for this, I feel like somebody who's super, super like the mathematic person of the world could make one equation that on one graph, that would show up. I don't know, I could be dreaming. Somebody though. You can, yeah? And if I'm totally off, then I'm so sorry, but, yeah, I, math, math was not my, I was good in high school, but I was like, I'm never doing this again, yeah? Um, so, normally we hear the word makemakika for mathematics. My kids, they think this is a funny word because it means kill the mosquito. Um, <laughs> but 
I use that word for years. Now I hear a lot of times people are using the terms pilihelu, and that just means like about numbers. Yeah, things about numbers. Um, and so even just that shift changes it from makemakika, which is the words, meanings don't mean math. They don't mean number stuffs. They mean something else, which is, but again, nothing wrong if we are here. Yeah? I went to Kayapuni, took however many years of math. I mean, of Olalo Hawaii in high school, in college, have degrees in Olalo Hawaii, and only recently have we adjusted to this. So we got to be where we're at, yeah. Um, but definitely when this word came out for my kids, it made sense to them. Like, what is this that we're learning about? Oh, namia pili helu, all the stuff's about numbers. Okay, that makes sense to me. Um, and so when I was thinking about math, I was like, okay, what is math? Math is like formulas to me when I write them up and down. Not when I write them like this, but when I write them up and down, or when I'm solving up and down vertically, they look a lot like a genealogy, yeah? If Tutu Kane and Tutu Wahine get together and they have four kids, and then those guys get together with four other people and then they have 100 kids, then that is my final on the bottom. So I was like, okay. So maybe math is about pilina. So what is X is pilina to Y and what is these things? Hopefully that works, but I don't know if this is, I, if I had to teach math, that's probably how I would teach it. Yeah. But they don't let me teach math. I also don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how I was trying to figure it out. Um, a lot of times, Real high-level math words are kind of funny in Hawaiian, um, like makemakika, but some of them are not, yeah? Like the parallel lines are moilike, are things that lie together in the same way. So just some of the, and when I, like parallel doesn't mean anything to me until I know what the word means in English, but moi and like lying together in, in similarity makes sense to me. So when I use those terms with my kids, and I ask her, like, oh, draw two lines that moilike. She doesn't know what parallel means. She doesn't even, that's, she's in kindergarten, she's in first grade. They don't talk about that yet. But I'm pretty sure she can draw, like, stuff that might not be same, but she can draw two lines that lie together, you know? So sometimes our words, I think, are a little bit more helpful to understanding. I realize also that if they don't have the background in the olelo, that's another step. But sometimes we gotta stop blaming the amount of steps that it takes to get there and just do the work. Which is also horrible to say it to teachers at the beginning of the school year. I started Monday, I'm so sorry. Um, but it is about that, yeah? Like it's, we're gonna take four more steps so that next year we only gotta take three, and the year after that maybe two. And then we'll be there, you know? And then we can talk about parallel lines or whatever, but the processing has already been adjusted. Um, and patterns, we have so many, so many patterns in Mea Hawaii, yeah? In, in our designs, in the way that we build aina. If you look at lo'i, that's like a, a, a perfect pattern, yeah? You look at lo'i, the walls that are constructed, the patterning is unreal, the way the rocks are stacked. So it's looking at those kinds of things and bringing them in. If you teach trig, I don't know, I don't really remember. Sorry. I wasn't, couldn't get to that much detail. Um, epikema is a word that I see or a lot, Older word, I think, for science. Nowadays, uh, I usually see a lot of akiakamai when I was teaching science. I didn't look at that word when I looked at this word because I was like, I cannot do science. I cannot do epic. I was freaking out. And then my husband is like, it's akiakamai. And I was like, oh, what is that from? We're a little bit com competitive. What is that word? Like, I use epikema when I was in Kaipuni. We use epi epikema. And he's like, well, ake akamai means to ake, to yearn for intelligence, yeah, to yearn for akamai. And I was like, okay, maybe I can use that word because I feel like I can ake akamai, but I cannot epikema. So that just this step alone helped me to feel like I could do what I needed to do. Um, and for me again, and I talked about this a little bit, it's about teaching the Hawaiian system first, especially if it exists and it's comparable. I taught middle school science, we did, Kavayakane, the kids learned the oli, we went outside, we looked at the things, we learned about the Hawaiian ao, we learned about all of these stuff, they memorized it, we went to actual uh, places on our campus, luckily we're in Palolo, so we have a kahawai, we have a lo'i, we have, it's rainy in the back there, we get those ao pano pano that roll in, like, and we can still see the kai too, so we had a really good space to kind of be able to engage in that chat, uh, and that, 
the chant, the pule, the oli, the genealogy, the mo'olelo, whatever you want to call it, because it's all of those things. Um, and then after the kids felt like solid with that, then I was like, oh, there's this thing called omoaea. That's evaporation. And then we learned the, the other, like, the, you know, the, the picture when you look up the water cycle, and it has that same. And the kids are like, kumo, that's like kawaiakane. But we don't wear that kind of clouds in Hawaii. We don't wear this kind of the textbook, you know? And so, even as a kid, when I was thinking about it, maybe I didn't get it because I was looking at this textbook that had clouds that no more any, we know more those clouds here, that had this system that doesn't really exist like how it does in the book here. So why am I starting out there and then trying to like sprinkle in a little kawaiakane at the end? Why not teach the kids what is our mo'olelo, what is our science, and then let them use that to understand another system which is a foreign system that parts of it exists here but the whole thing doesn't yeah um we did the same thing for like plate tectonics we did pele first we learned the chance first we did the same thing for kind of like what Kaliko was talking about this morning with the big bang theory and darwinism we used kumulipo and we looked at it that way um and for me as someone who was like i cannot teach science i was like i can teach kumulipo i can teach pele i can teach kawaiakane because i feel comfortable and that helped me to get through the times when I had to teach about atoma and hunaola and chlorophyll, which we was like colophila, colo, you know, it's, and it's, while we knew the body systems, I uh, almost talked, okay, while we knew the body systems, those words don't exist, yeah? So it, that kind of process will help get you through. I'm gonna do the noel real quick because this one I think is the easiest because it is, it's living, yeah? Fine arts, Mele, hula, hula hula, performative stuff. It's easily translatable to the Mea Hawaii. A lot of times, actually, this campus does it really great. KS, I think, actually does it. The three, they do different forms of it and they do it well. Um, and so, it's kind of an easier one to apply over. We didn't forget the Makau Kino guys, the sports. I think my big reminders for the sports ones, and we tend to go, oh, Hawaiian games, Hawaiian sports, makahiki. Okay, what about lono? What about it being a season? It's not just a festival of, of fun and whatever, yeah? There was actual competition. People still did die. Like, it wasn't just all of a sudden magic, time of peace. These are still warriors training for war. These are still people that have mo'olelo after makahiki season. And this is still a time where we want to make sure that we are fruitful and plentiful and aina momona after makahiki. So it's bigger than just the Makahiki games. And so that's my, like, don't forget that that's, that's the primary reason that the Makahiki games exist. And it's not the games first and then the afterwards. Okay, so, this is like my second to the last one. I just threw them all together. There's some other things in here. And I'm gonna share this out with you folks afterwards. I'll give it to Lisa and she'll put it up. Um, but it's just about connecting as much of the puzzle pieces as we can. I know that definitely not all of us can do all of this every day in every lesson, but we can probably do some of the elements or some of the things that engage that thinking process um, within a unit at the very least, yeah? Can we start with some kind of genealogy of whatever we're teaching? Can we start with the mo'olelo? Can we base parts of it in Hawaii or in OEV learning? So if we cannot, control the content, then we have to control the process and we gotta embed Hawaiian thinking into the process. So, what we're gonna do? We're gonna try hard, forget to our goal. Um, so we gotta try intentionally, use the process as much as can, yeah? Ho'oma'amau, make ourselves familiar with it. Go and feel funny in the beginning. Yes, it will feel super awkward. Kids will probably ask you, how come we learning them like this? <laughs> This is weird, yeah? But after we do that for however long, we stop questioning that it's wrong because it's not, yeah? Mm -hmm. When work for our kupuna for thousands of years, our keiki is our kupuna. We're gonna be there, yeah? We gotta do what we do best. Not to say we're not gonna do the other stuff, but let's do us too, and let's do us first. And then after we get super ma'a with it, then it'll become normal, yeah? It's always, we're always working towards normalization, of Mea Hawaii, Olelo Hawaii, Hana Hawaii. So, hopefully, is it 45? 
40. 35. Oh, 35? 35. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, wait, wait, wait. Tell them I. So hopefully if all of this goes, and I know I probably never give you guys enough, um, but we can build and farm that lo'i like in our brains, in our na'au, so that we will always be able to perceive the world through that kuana ike Hawaii. Um, so that whether I'm in the lo'i, whether I'm outside hanakapa, whether I'm in my math class, I always feel like I'm with my kupuna and working with my kupuna. And so that I can recognize that, stand on their shoulders, and then make my shoulders makakau for the keiki for stand on minds. And then they'll understand that. And we just keep stacking, yeah? So we don't have to kind of not gonna be as much struggle, but we get more room for struggle with new fun struggles, yeah? Because oka, Hawaii ka pika oka honua, which is Hawaii is the center of the honua, and oke aloha ka meho pakelea na ika honua. Atipilahi paki says that aloha is the thing that's gonna save the world. So, eola nui kako, o eola nui kalahui ina pua Hawaii. This is our kids are really it's gonna, what's gonna make the world thrive. So we gotta. Let them be them and let them be Kanaka and let them be Hawaii. I think that's all. Hello, my friend.